Welcome to the Monday, September 19th, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. At this point, members and staff can introduce themselves. Eric Gilbertson. <clears throat> Martha Smirsky, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Liz Pritchett, member. And at this point, Meredith can review the remote meeting procedures and process. Okay, so we just have Sandy on for remote as an applicant. We don't have any members of the public, so I'm going to keep this fairly mm -hmm. short. Um, and this is more for people who might be on via ORCA and interested in joining. Um, so those of you who are watching this meeting via ORCA Media, you can participate in tonight's Design Review Committee meeting via the Zoom platform. You can if you want to have the video option so that we can see you, um, then you want to use this link and just paste, type it into your browser. Um, and that will, oh, thank you. Um, and that will bring you right into the meeting and I'll let you in when I see you in the waiting room. Um, or you can call into this phone number and punch in this meeting ID when prompted and you'll be able to hear and speak over the phone. You just won't have the video options where we can see you. If you have any problems accessing the e meeting, please email me. My email address is here on your screen, mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. We do ask that um, for anyone who is attending via Zoom, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This reduces background noise. Um, and know that turning on your video is optional. Um, uh, Sandy, if and for anybody else who gets on remotely, uh, please reserve the chat function for technical issues um, and any substantive comments. Just make sure you're you're making orally over the microphone. Um, in the event that the public is unable to access the meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I'll hand the meeting back over to Steve. Do we have a little bit of an echo going on? A little feedback or something. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Just I couldn't tell if it was me or the microphone. At this point, do I hear a motion from committee member to approve the agenda? I'll second it. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Stephen. Liz. And we can move to the first application for replacement of a shed at 5 West Street. You want to come up and have a seat and describe your application for us. As much as possible, try to speak into the microphone. It'll carry everything through to the minute taker and to anybody, including Liz, who's attending remotely. <laughs> You're elected. It's just the shed for this meeting. The later meeting will be about the driveway issue. It's oh, just the shed. Okay. All right. Good. We were wondering, wondering about that. Um, yes. I don't know if we state our names, Sean and Jenny Sheehan, from five, 5 West Street. We had applied uh, build a, a shed in the back, I guess, the northwest corner of our, our property, not right in the corner the five five and ten foot um abutting and um same same color as our as our house recently painted the house which was previous i think we were in last year for so um that that lining match matching with that um uh, it's kind of over on a hill so it would have have piers um Supporting, supporting that. I'm not sure. Is Anything there, else is there a garage on the corner in that corner of the property? Uh, no, the garage is uh, the garage would be on the southwest corner. So, so the, the garage is on the where you were pointing. Yeah, along the sheds here. Right on this lower corner, right on First Avenue. Is that where the garage is? Yes. 
Um, right. So actually, though, for First Avenue would be. Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. Yep. For, the so the shed the first from Avenue. First Avenue, the shed is behind the garage. Correct. Okay. Yep. But not attached to it. Not attached to it. No, it'd be a good kind of the far end of the lot from the, the garage is right the garage on First is Ave. To a hill. Built in right yes. on. So yeah. Down lower. It's about okay. 10, about ten feet off First Avenue, and then this would be on the. Garages are never board. big enough. <laughs> <laughs> our, our our current garage, our current garage is a one one car garage, yes, and we're um, converting the space above the current garage into a into an ADU, um, which and then going to have the garage well as part of our, um, I guess the. Next week, or whatever we're back tonight. So oh, it is seven tonight. Oh, tonight. tonight as well. Oh, okay. Oh, great. So I guess what we'll be talking about seven o'clock is <laughs> is having the the garage itself be a shared shared garage space where we would still keep our car there, but allow um, a tenant to keep a a bike or or other things in the garage. It's it's um it's a one car garage, but it's it's kind of like a lot like a one a one plus if you will. I think it's twenty one foot by you know it's like twenty two foot deep by even with the other space yeah you couldn't fit two cars in there but bigger than bigger than one <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah if you had a couple super minis you could fit a couple of them in there <laughs> we, we thought we might be able to fit both our leaf and our super and if we pull them by down so they were the uphill from first avenue to where you're going to put the garage right the garage. Well, uh, where you're going to put the shed. Yeah, right. That's, that's correct. And it's kind of a downhill from West Avenue or West uh, Street. Yeah, from West Avenue, it's pretty flat to the to the top to the top of the shed there, and then yeah. and then the hill starts to go starts to go down um, toward the back of where we have the, is the it, shed. Is it right next to the neighbor's um, line? Yeah, I think we have it. Um, doing it five five or six feet off of the our neighbor on west street's mm -hmm. yard and i think it's uh, i'm going to mention it'd be about 11 feet off the the line between our first avenue and, neighbor. and for the first avenue neighbor if i recall correctly it dips quite significantly right back there is that correct yeah right okay. those yeah so right where we just like the probably the last um three or four feet of the garage, it starts to dip. And then from, from there, after, I mean, the shed starts to dip. And then right then those last 11, 12 feet of our property, as well as the first, I don't know, probably 10 feet of her property are, are pretty, pretty steep. So in that zone, five feet is the minimum? Yeah. Okay. One quick question. The doors are facing the house? Uh, correct. Okay. Yes. I thought so because of the slope. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> assumed that was the case. Yeah, yeah. Is there an existing fence between you and the neighbor on West Street? No, no. No, there's a um, there's a wall between us and our First Avenue neighbor, like a bit of a I guess a retaining, like a retaining wall, wall down where yeah. they form the property line there. But there's uh, there's no no demarcation between okay. uh, other than you know, plants and things. And the siding on the shed is shingled to match that on the house? Yeah, that's what we were thinking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> is it a modular shed or is it a stick built shed? Um, Are you buying a, a shed kit? Oh, oh, a shed, a shed kit. We, we actually, um, we hadn't completely ironed that out. I was looking at designs and doing it with, with sticks and then Jenny had also found one on line that was matched there. Our thought was we would be doing this in the in the spring. It was kind kind of driven. We thought by the other, I guess by our seven o'clock piece. We thought it'd be good just to roll everything together. <laughs> you want to speak? There is a Vermont company that makes sheds. Mm -hmm. um, I can't recall the name at the moment. Um, I it, shed. The one on Bristol. I think so. Uh, there's several. Yeah. There's one right down when you're going down the hill from down the eight. Um, one down in Jamaica that makes really nice buildings and stuff. Okay. Um, so the colors would be the, the gray siding, the mm -hmm. black shutters, if it has shutters, and white trim. 
one thing is I wasn't sure of is they they if they come custom, it wouldn't be shakes. It would probably be clavered with the oh. same color. Okay. I don't know if that's significant or not. You just said something about siding and and didn't, didn't, didn't know if that was matching the house siding or if it was a either shingle or or uh clapboards are fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, then I just put gray, gray siding there. Oh, just my bad. Are you run, are you running power out to it? We were thinking that no. We have, no, we weren't weren't thinking. <laughs> we weren't thinking power to it. If you wanted a light inside you could put a, they, they make a little kit and then very inexpensive. And it's a solar panel outside okay. and lights inside, motion detector light inside. Oh, nice. Okay. So you could attach that to the side of the building facing more south. Right. Where if you have a, a spot that's not covered by trees or shaded yeah. too much. Yeah, but if big... you can get, you know, a couple of panels and you can put a couple of lights inside so that when you open the doors and walk in, the light comes on. Yeah, well, that's a that's a nice idea. Yeah, it's a lot better. We we're, we we're thinking running running power from the house seemed like the over, but yeah, those little solar panels are a good idea. Immediately south is a lot of maple trees, but we probably could could catch like a southeasterly and get enough morning sun to battery it up. That's a good idea. Thank you. Although at some point, I would imagine you'll probably run power to it if you have the tools or need some, a, a charger out there for something. Yeah, potentially. I mean, I think we we're mostly thinking of it for storing the, you know, the lawnmower, the bikes, the things, things like that. And we, and we do have power on the, on the back porch, which isn't too many steps away, but you're right. You know, <laughs> we built so they can never, never be big enough and never enough power, I guess. The solar panels are pretty small. They're like 18 inches, 12 by 18, something like that. So we could just make, do an amendment to allow them to add that on the exterior okay. on a corner facing closest to south. If that's okay with everyone. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Uh, it's not really clear. I think that I'm reading that. You're intending on asphalt shingles for the roof? Oh yeah, that was just to to match at uh, just the asphalt our architectural uh, shingles, which is is what we used when we had our um, house uh, re-roofed. That was my two, next two question. years ago. Is that yeah. what you have on your house? Yeah, okay. so that was it was that was the idea here. It was just to match, try to match the house with both the colors and with the um, the shingles. The front of the shed is over a hundred feet back from the sidewalk, right? By my calculations. Um, 16 and 5 is 20 some feet in your lot line there is 138 feet so yeah. a long ways back yeah that sounds right yeah that's, yeah Anybody have any other comments, questions, or suggestions? It's a good choice of location. <clears throat> About as far away from everything as you can. <laughs> so what I can do at this point is go through, there's a set of criteria okay. that applies to the projects. Uh, all projects, number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. New construction shall be considered to be compatible if the materials used possess a kind or type that are appropriate to the district. Materials selected shall either fit the neighborhood context of the proposed building and or reflect the nature and use of the structure acceptable. Height. New building shall be compatible with the varied heights of existing adjacent buildings acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height of facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings in the facade of the building should create a rhythm, acceptable. Roof shape and equipment, consider similarity or compatibility with roof shapes in immediate area, 
concealed roof equipment and features on flat roofs from eye level doesn't apply here. Uh, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tabulator, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building should be considered in the alteration of the building. Actually, this is for the new construction. Architectural features prevailing in the surrounding area shall be regarded as suggestive of the extent, nature, and scale of details that are appropriate for new buildings, acceptable. Criteria for new buildings only. New development shall incorporate sustainable design and construction methods and materials compatible with historic materials and styles, acceptable. Scale and massing. Scale and massing of new buildings should be compatible with surrounding structures, acceptable. Context and connectivity. Building design shall be sensitive to the overall character and context of the design review overlay district and to adjacent buildings, acceptable. Accessory buildings and structures. New accessory buildings or structures shall be located within either the side yard or rear yard and shall not visually disrupt the streetscape or affect the integrity of the existing building or proposed new building acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. Martha, I'm a yes. Stephen says yes. Liz says yes. Okay, the application is approved. Thank you. Thank you. And there, we're going to have you sign the um, recommendation form. And then um, that will get rolled into the packet, and we'll see how what DRB does at seven on the driveway. We'll sign start. that in the box. Okay. My name. Should we both sign? Uh, just one of you is fine. Um, and I double checked the agenda. You're actually second. On the DRB meeting, so the meeting starts at seven, but your application won't be up right away. But I don't know exactly how long that first application okay. will take. But Thank you. feel free to go and hang out somewhere else if you want. But it's pretty wet outside too. <laughs> Good luck with your project. Thank you. See you in a bit. Take care. We can move forward to the next application. Welcome back, one thirty-eight West Street. Hi, Sandy. Hi there. Hi, Sandy. Hello. Go ahead and bring us up to date on the new information. Okay. Um, so tonight I'm bringing forth four topics. The first one is um, the possible, I would say actually unlikely, but possible uh, roof material replacement with TPO. Um, the second is a requirement from the city to add uh, proper handrails to the exterior ramp. Um, and the third is to talk further about the airlock. And the fourth is to talk further about windows. Um, those actually, it's that's going in as a fresh start, the six angle top windows. So uh, covering the roof material first, um, it's not visible from the street. This is a more modern material than the uh, crushed stone on asphalt that's there now. Um, something needs to be replaced very soon. And um, I, this is a recommended uh, material because it has such a long warranty and it's good against leaks. Um, onto the second item, the exterior ramp. Uh, I've included a photograph. Uh, we need to extend the handrails out to the very, very bottom of the ramp, plus a bit further. And um, I'm proposing black pipe iron um, or iron pipe as the handrail and as the, the bottom, the end posts. Um, I should also add that the sprinkler system is requiring that the space underneath of the ramp be enclosed and they have approved that we can use lattice. And so I'm just suggesting that we use the black lattice that I submitted in earlier applications. It's just a black lattice. Um, maybe I should ask if there are any questions about those first two items. Yeah, can you remind me where the ramp is? If I'm looking at the building from Main Street straight on, where is the ramp? 
it's all the way in the back of the building on the right hand side. You cannot see it from the street. Okay. So there's main street. Okay. Yep. Here, Thank you. In. That helps me. Are there any other questions about the first two items? No. no. Okay. Um, so on to the airlock. Um, the new information here is the, um, a more uh, detailed letter from the historic preservationist named Alex Tolstoy. And um, it, it helped me understand a little bit better what's going on. But the um, it's actually, they, they don't think now that the granite heaved, we think that it got worn out by salt. And it's actually a cup. Um, it might also be a little bit of a heave, but it's mostly the cupping. And what happened is they started to lay out the airlock. They realized that there's an inch gap in the middle, including where the hinge of the door needs to come down and hopefully be supported by something so that the door doesn't come off. And also there's you know, lack of thermal protection where there's a gap. So what they want to do is put down five um, pins instead of the one on the corner and they would prefer it to have a permanent, um, like a track. And um, uh, all of that coming in and out every season, um, Alex Tolstoy is really worried about um, the granite slab. The granite slab is, is historic. It's actually quite unusual. It's eight inches thick and about eight feet by eight feet in size. And um, he's just not happy about drilling those holes in there. So he was the person that brought this up, that he would prefer to see the airlock be permanent. And he also brings up the point that this will help in the summers to keep the building cool, which I have to admit I had not thought of, but I think it's a, a very good point. So um, anyways, uh, I guess, Steve, would you like to have discussion about this and then go on to the windows? Sure, that's fine. Sandy, I have a question. With the railings and the <laughs> roofing. I have, um, I have a question about how the airlock is going to be secured to that granite. I, I didn't understand that. Um, Sandy, I have the information from your prior application where it got approved temporary. Do you want me to pull that up on the screen so Liz can see as you're talking about it? That would be good. I didn't think about resubmitting it. Sorry. Nope, that's okay. I, I didn't think about including it in the packet that went to everybody. So it's not just well, you. brilliant. If you don't mind, put it on up and let Liz have a look. Yeah, I missed, I missed the last meeting, so... Well, this was a couple of meetings ago, I think. I don't know if you were there for that one. Or I don't think it was either. Give me a minute. I've Thanks. got to find the right one. Here we go. So, let's zoom out a little. So here's where the, here's the current, you know, existing historic doors and the whole granite slab here. And then here's the where the airlock would be, right, Sandy? Yep. Yes. So set back in, you know, away from where the arches are. Um, and there's multiple anchor points. Well, no, there weren't before. So it's mostly attaching through a channel on the ceiling, which is permanent and black, same color as the ceiling. And then it had yeah, that's what it looks like. Yep. Um and then it had, see the corner right, right where the little hand is? There's a corner post that was gonna pin down to the, to the floor. And then there were a couple of attachments against the brick walls in the mortar. And that was gonna be enough. But if you look at the, that door, it, can you go back up? Oh, there it is. sure, I was gonna show this one, but. Oh yeah, what, why don't we do, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's a good idea. So do you see that, Liz? Yes, oh. I do. So in other words, there won't be any holes drilled into the granite slab. I think there will still need to be one. Okay. But um, if you don't mind going back up, Meredith, to the 
um, front view. That one? Um, that one with the panic bar. So um, you see how there's a thin rail along the bottom? Mm -hmm. And that would, in, from almost all along that length, it cups down and the center line of the cup is right underneath the handle on the door. So it's just that that is suddenly having to support and um, reinforce the the airlock and it wasn't designed to do that. Right, okay. So there's a, there's a, a un, uh, unanticipated gap here, right, right, Andy, where the granite dips down so that now this whole bar along the bottom here in the middle is carrying the weight versus the granite carrying the weight. Correct. It has, there's a small threshold under the door, but it was going to be, um, the threshold was going to be an inch or will be an inch off the granite. If you will go with this temporary setup. Well, whether it's temporary or permanent, that, that inch has to be made up. Um, but the, the problem is, is they have to use extra pins and they have to somehow remove it. And I did find a neoprene gasket that they were willing to look into, but um, that, that won't be enough because it, that obviously isn't gonna take weight. The neoprene gasket. So they what what they wanted to do was add an aluminum bar that could be scribed to the cup. Yeah. Who proposed that, Sandy? Who proposed Could you that? what? Who proposed that aluminum bar? Uh, the airlock company and uh, and Alex while they were talking about it. Okay. So you hope that won't be a trip hazard, right? It's like a threshold, I guess. It will be a threshold, but the, um, so what Alex is worried about is the extra pins having to be coming uh -huh. in and out every year. Right, no, I understand. Right that. where wa people are walking. Mm -hmm. for, for me, the fact that this is, you're proposing it to be permanent now raises some issues that, uh, a temporary airlock might not raise. Uh, first, uh, the you still need to go with a heavier door if you're going to do the locking door. Is that what you planned on? Yeah, they cannot lock the inside door um, uh, for a number of reasons. Because that is that obscures the doors on the original doors on the building. By it does. Part, I mean, partly it, because it's off center, and uh, the railing. My calculation: the railing comes right in front of the, the lock side. Comes right in front of the doors. It does. the The doors are wide. They're five feet wide. Is Is there any reason the door? The airlock's made. When what? it got approved in July, the airlock's already finished. So I don't think they're going to make it again. I mean, I think the option is to just have the holes in the slab and have it be seasonal as was agreed upon. Is there, uh, so that you said the airlock is already fabricated? Yeah, they were planning, they were starting to put it in. I'm just curious, didn't we review this similar airlock a couple of years ago? It was when Margot George was still alive. Yeah. Back before it was, the it was several years ago and it, it was rejected. It wasn't similar. Yeah. Uh, well, the fact that this is the worst performing building probably in Montpelier, if not the state of Vermont, uh, it's much more important now that buildings be energy efficient. And the owner just let it go that he was going to have air leaking out the door. But it's not acceptable anymore from a climatic point of view and a financial point of view. 
is the uh, is the new sill for the door across there? Is that going to create some kind of a trip hazard? How how, how tall? Is I that? haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. Well, it's going to probably be about an inch yeah. and a half, I'm guessing, inch and a quarter. That that, that seems not good to me. I mean, it's is just an element of somebody not seeing it and tripping over it. Mm -hmm. There, <clears throat> most of the uh, the thresholds they make. <clears throat> excuse me. They make a threshold that's either uh, it either has a thermal break or not, but it's a handicap threshold, and there's probably three quarters to an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch, and they're sloped, and they're specifically listed as handicap thresholds, so that you could roll a wheelchair over, yeah. and and you don't trip on those, unless you're dragging your feet, you wouldn't know it's there. <laughs> And that would probably, my guess is that would probably be specified. And that you can get that in colors, either s silver, gray, black, to match whatever other framework you're using. <clears throat> that could be, assuming, we'll see, we'll see, but that could be something that could, is added as an option. For them, or would it be a recommendation? I would think that they would want the handicap threshold anyway. Yeah, that's all we've ever used. That's what they were planning to do. I think the handy, this, this isn't a handicap. Well, it's not handicap, but I'm just saying that's a low profile. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a low profile, a, so nobody's going to trip over that threshold. It is an egress on a public building. It has to be. Yes. Okay, so that's it's a. So that's required by code anyway. Yeah, so that's something that is is going to be in place no matter the height of the cell under the door, the cell, the bar, the support under the door, right? Right. Well, the threshold would mount right on the granite. Yeah. And if it if it's slightly if it's slightly out of level, they may have to level it, but there there shouldn't in, in the width of a threshold. There shouldn't be that much of a difference. Is the granite hollowed out underneath where the threshold is going to go? That's my understanding. Yes. That by making it permanent, I think they have more options about the height of the threshold and the design of it. Okay. It's not, it's not, it's not yeah. having to hold things together. As long as it meets code, which it would have to anyway, I don't see any issues with it. With the threshold. With the threshold. I don't see an issue with the threshold. My concern is just, is basically the permanency of an airlock there in one of the most beautiful buildings in town. And I'm not seeing any way around that. I'm assuming that the main door is very well weather stripped. It's yeah. not, it can't be, it's a double door. Oh, it's a double door, yeah. yeah. We can't, to be honest, he can't lock it. Right, you mentioned that. Um, it's this. This one, Liz. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can still weather strip it, though, can't you? And the weather, the airlock's already been approved and manufactured. Yeah. So I think it will. The option yeah. is going in as seasonal or going in permanent. Uh huh. I think as, as far as my having it permanent makes a difference between having it a temporary piece makes a lot of difference in, in my way of looking at it uh, because of the, at least partly because of the scaring the beautiful uh, ori original doors. Okay. Okay. 12 months a year instead of 
seven months or six months. Well, then I'm going to suggest that we keep it as is and we'll just deal with the holes. Hopefully they won't be back to try to replace the granite slab. Um, well, is that, I mean, hold on a second, Sandy. <laughs> yeah. This, I mean, that's Eric's opinion. What yep. is everybody else's, right? Because it's, you need at least three yeses. And I just want to make sure we're not, I'm not, oh. trying, to, I'm not trying to overrule you, Eric. I just want to make sure that we understand where it is on this. So I'm sorry if I'm misunderstanding, but, um, why do you have to, I thought you could build the airlock so that um, if it's if it's not permanent, you still, you wouldn't have to necessarily drill the holes, would you? Yes, the five holes will be drilled into the slab because it's not stable horizontally with the door opening and shutting. The hinge isn't supported, the strike bar, you know, the on the, the fixed ray, the style is not supported. So they have to drill more holes. And, and part of the concern is that those holes will then be exposed when you take all the framework out, allowing water yeah, to and then down they just into wear, the hole. Wear on the holes. Um, and then yeah, possible scars of other things that have to hold it together that will be coming in and out every season. Um, what What about leaving the threshold in? That's my thought too. And uh, so that you're not exposing the holes or anything. And well, that then might help. removing the rest of it. So, oh, oh, like taking off the door the itself? Yeah, taking the door and the rest of it down like it was originally planned. It's just the addition to this is really the threshold. Could the could they right leave the um, originally put? Could could they leave the corner post up year round? But really, the problem is that corner post and then the L on the bottom. You know, the L shape on the floor. I, I would I would say leaving the corner posts and. The, and leaving the threshold in place would help a, help a lot in terms is that then it wouldn't obscure those the front doors during if that's acceptable to everybody I think we could make that work I think that's brilliant you're brilliant Eric okay so the corner post would stay and I then the, the thresholds are going to be black uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to look a little weird to have them there but uh but they also blend in a little bit with the black yeah. problem. Yeah, and that would be, you know, if the, if the. It's going to look a lot better than. Having if the panels black. come out and, and the frame stays, that's probably as good as we're going to do with this. this. I can live with the, the threshold and the columns staying as long as the actual glass or plexiglass or whatever it is comes in and out with each season. Yeah. I mean, I, just, I understand the issue with the granite and the holes and fastening it down, but if you leave the threshold in place, then then you don't have to worry about that. Right. If there's screw holes, you can put bolts or screws in. When it's out to the side, it's all yeah. doesn't have stuff getting in it. I think quit leaving the corner post will also help people know that there's something on the floor so that they're less likely to trip on the threshold being left there. Yeah, I'm okay with that solution as well. I, I, I am 100% sure I can sell that one to the owner. Well, Steve is here writing away on the recommendation form, so we'll let him finish up with that before we move on to anything else.
I, I'm going to send a quick text to somebody. Hold on. What if, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm in the middle of a trip and people, <laughs> anyways. Sandy, what I wrote was the airlock entry to be installed with a corner post and door side threshold to be installed permanently with the remainder of the frame glass or plexiglass and door to be removable for seasonal installations. I think for the corner post to be rigid, the side threshold needs to there's like a a rail on the floor on the side i think that both need to be there permanently okay so i just scratch out door side i'll just say corner post and thresholds okay to be installed permanently with the remainder of the frame glass or plexiglass and door to be removable for seasonal installations very good Okay. Okay. Um, next item is the angle top windows. So this is a fresh application. Um, and uh, I wanna thank you for approving the 31 rectangular windows last time. Those are all the rectangular building windows on the building, um, including the front facade. And um, uh, there was some disagreement last time about what should happen with the six angle top windows that are in the dormers on the back of the building. Um, I would point out again that they're not visible from the street, uh, really anywhere. And um, uh, so they're in poor condition and the in interior storms are, are really not working. Um, so the options, we very carefully went through pricing and drawing out options. Uh, the replacement of the windows, um, uh, having an actual functional modern window that looks like the old one is cost prohibitive. Uh, replacing the windows in their original shape, but fixed and they would be flat without a step for the lower sash is gonna cost $2,000 a window. Um, I, for that and the other option where the, it's not easy for someone to get out, I find um, unacceptable for life safety issues. Um, so these, if they're fixed, obviously they can't be used for egress. Um, the third option is the small triangle of glass that was suggested. And um, this would require a horizontal mullion uh, that would be between the two, the operating rectangle window and the fixed triangle above it, you know, kind of filling in as a panel up until the roof. Um, that mullion, horizontal mullion has to take a lot of stress because it has to hold the window in place, both of them. And so it's structural as well as it has to, to shed water. Um, when we drew it out, the glass was gonna be about four inches high and 12 inches wide. And the best way to look at that is I sent, I included a photograph of one of the windows from the inside and the bottom rail, sorry, the meeting rail is pushed all the way up. So you can see how much glass is available in the triangle, but inside that we have to have another, like a fixed sash. So it would take off about an inch and a half from that remaining small triangle. So there's just not a lot of glass that would remain. Um, and uh, the labor on this was going to be really huge. Um, so um, the team found this to be both infeasible and aesthetically confusing was the term um, from the historic preservationist. Um, he asked me to point out again that the bathroom window, which is on the right-hand side on the, on the west elevation, has always been rectangular and it's always had a panel over it. The panel's painted green. He said he could paint it black or green. Um, so um, 
those are the four options we could think of. Um, and one thing Alex suggested is he said, if it were uh, truly important that maybe what um, the owner should do is uh, restore the six front windows on the second floor rather than replacing those. It's basically a trade. It seemed, um, I, again, for me, I'm concerned about any window that could be used as part of an apartment having to have one or two fixed storms that make it hard to get out if there's a fire. So I didn't agree with that, but he suggested it. So we've got to put it out there for you. Sandy, I noticed that when I read the materials today, are you suggesting that where we approved the replacement of these of the rectangular windows that the owner is willing to restore those, which I understand is a significantly more expensive experience. Is is that what you're saying? The historic preservationist has has suggested that. Okay, I think we we were all confused on that part. <laughs> so thank you for clarifying it now. But that's not part of the application, is that correct? Um, my concern is a restored window is harder for someone to get out if there's a fire. And um, I think that, uh, so it's not my recommendation. I think that I, I'm quite sure the owner's going to do whatever you folks suggest. So um, as you work it out, um, just that is something that Alex put out as a way to make a compromise. I, I would, I, I think the strategy is that the more, the front windows that are visible to everybody are more important than the rear windows. However, the replacement windows will not look different, much different at all from the the original windows. So, and if and if you restore the windows, you're restoring basically the sash and putting insulated glass in. <clears throat> but then at that point, how do you get rid of the window weights and that cavity, which is no insulation in it, which is a huge uh, right. heat heat loss. And everything you do, including getting rid of the weights and one or two storms on it, is going to increase exit time if there's a fire. Yes. I don't really see the benefit of trading one for the other. I really don't. The ones that we approved, I think there was a good reason for approving it, and I have no problem with that at all. <coughs> But I, I still have issues with putting a re rectangular window in the arched windows or the triangular windows. And the reasons that I do are the reasons that I stated last week. This is one of the most significant historic buildings we have on Main Street. It's an absolutely gorgeous building. And to change the windows so significantly seems to me to be an aberration. I have in mind several years ago, actually, when someone on Court Street wanted to change the double front doors on their house because of the need for e better egress and also for weather reasons, we wouldn't allow that. And here we're talking about taking out arched windows and putting in square windows with a plywood or some sort of wood panel on top of it. Well, those they would are, be those paneled are the out to match the, the one that's existing. But again, they are not visible from any these, street, any these, public domain. These are only the ones in the rear of the building? Correct. There's um, two dormers on in the driveway side. There's one towards the rear of the building. And then there are three inside the tree on the east side, on the right-hand side of the building as you face it. Um, the three that are facing the tree are imminently going to become part of an apartment. And the one in the egress in the hallway, I mean, the, the other thing would be to balance out what the function is inside the rooms, but those four are critical. The other two, there is a decent chance that that will be turned into an apartment as well. It's an office space right now, but I, I just, you know, now I noted I noticed that on the front of the building facing the street up on the third level 
uh, and there are some triangular upper yes. sash. And yes, it and the like, owners. Yep. And it looks like there's, is there one half round or is that also a triangular? It's actually a beautiful mix of angle tops and half rounds. And all of those have, it's been agreed that they're going to be restored. Okay. So the, the ones on the front of the building would not be changed. You're only looking to change the ones on the back of the building, which don't face the street. Correct. So none of those, none of those, all of those are going to be restored. Yeah, it's the he's, entire front of the building, right? It, you can't. All the, the, all the arched angle tops on the front will they're, be restored, and the, the rectangular will be replaced. They were approved before. Right. So if you zoom, I'm zooming in yes. on the big screen right now, so you can see the other side. Right. So there's an angle top here on this bump out, and then on the other side, and then this is that. Half round, half it, round, half round. It shows, angle it shows on this picture here, yeah. there are several of the angle tops and the half rounds yeah. up top that face the street. Yep. And the only ones they're proposing to change the panel are in the back of the building facing the tree and the parking lot. Yep. Yeah, and if you don't mind zooming out, Meredith, just a bit, you'll see that tree. But even if the tree weren't there, you wouldn't see them really from the street at all. They're just... Yeah, there's a lot of green back there. So yeah, you can't even really see that back section of the building. Right. And then coming down from the Unitarian Church towards the roundabout, you can't see the windows either. You know, from the other direction, you just. Uh, so these these windows are on the same side of the building and back of the building where the pellet silo is going. That's right. They're actually above the pellet silo. Yes. And this is going to be in such done in such a way that if someday somebody decides to reverse it, they can. Yes, that's correct. They're inserts. Yeah. So you just you can't even if you stand there, you can't see them. They they're stepped back. Yeah, because this zips in. Yeah, but even if that tree were gone, you couldn't see them. I'm I'm okay with <laughs> with that plan. I think considering egress and energy efficiency, and the fact that you're retaining so much of the historic character on the front, I think it's okay to make the change to those triangular topped windows in the back, and they can be replaced later on if somebody wanted to put back the originals. Right. I'm I'm. I guess I feel the same in the back that you you don't see it anyway, and you won't be able to tell even if you worry to see it from a distance, which you'd have to be in order to see it back there. I don't see that it's a noticeable change. And again, it is reversible if somebody chose to put the the triangle and the windows in the back for some reason, but the the new windows give you much better energy efficiency. There solves lead paint issues in case there is an apartment there. And it also gives you <laughs> much better egress if need be. One thing I remember doing not in Montpelier, it was maybe 20 years ago, is the owner made a commitment to store the windows on site. We, I mean, there's the basements in the floodplain, but they could be stored if the committee wanted store the, the yeah, original the old sashes yes no that would be a, a good thing to do to store those so that they could either be uh, replaced or or restored or recreated somehow if somebody chose to in the future i think that's a good idea is that okay with everyone uh, I'm still going to vote no on okay. this particular issue. I, I okay. recognize that everybody else is voting yes. Um, I also, I mean, in order to preserve them, let's say, let's save them, let's store them. Yes. At least we'll do that. Um, okay. And I recognize the fact that there is a three to one vote yeah. here. Um, having gone to grade school, I can count. <laughs> <Yes>. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I have, I've stated why I feel the way I do. Okay. Um, 
and that's all I can do. Okay, that's okay. This is why we have different people from different backgrounds on our committees so that we can get all the different perspectives. Yeah. And he's willing to use the on the third floor. Yeah. That and the uh, the low arch top along the first floor are all going to get restored as well. Those were, that shape's going to get preserved. So that's nice. I spent a lot of time walking by that building in my in the early 2000s when I lived on Liberty Street and worked on State Street. So I worked next door at Patterson Walk for a long time. Yeah. It's nice to see work getting done on the building for sure. Steve's writing again, Sandra. And I'm walking. It's all good. <laughs> May I may I say I'm a half an hour late for dinner? Um, may may I just trust you all to write up what we've discussed and whatever you say will be fine. Yeah, does anybody have any more questions for Sandy? I'm, I I, mean, I think you know, yeah. we've come to a reasonable compromise on things. So I'm yeah. So they'll be just what I what I wrote down was that the rear windows with a triangular top shape on the upper sash are to be removed and stored for possible future use if replaced with the new rectangular windows. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, they'll, they'll do a final vote and I will um, send you a scan of the form because I am going to need your signature or, or um, okay. on the form before we can issue any kind of permit. I will, if you don't mind sending it to me tomorrow, I'll I'll print it out, send it, scan it, and I can either take a picture and send it to you or actually email it back. Perfect. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so I'm much, sure. everybody. Area again. Uh, go go have dinner. I think you okay. stick to it just for the record for the minute keeping. Okay. Thank you. I have a question here. Thanks. You suggest key criteria for review for both angle top window replacement and making airlock permanent. Now we did make the recommendations for both of those. Do you still want me to go through this? Um, I, I think it was just the fact that I put that note in there because determining whether or not they're character defining features, I think you kind of discussed that, okay. right? So the, the front door clearly was a character defining yes. feature. It was very important to be able to see that part of the year at least. Okay, so and I've then just- It sounded like the, the just, chopped windows in the back yep. because they're in the back, Yes. Those aren't as much of a character defining feature as the ones in the front. Okay. That's what I took away from that, all, all that discussion. Okay. If somebody would come to me and be like, oh, we're appealing this. That's where so I would take it. I will just say that the character defining features are acceptable because of the because the airlock is removable and the windows are in the back of the building. Yeah. Okay. That's how I would look at it. But I just I I flagged that in there because that was sort of the under our guide our regulations that was one of the clincher points. So thank okay. you. Okay, so I'll go drop down to number two. Existing buildings should be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing an overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. Patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved to the extent feasible, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building, acceptable. 
And all in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric. This is Martha. I will say yes to replacing the roof material, adding the handrails, and to the um, modifications we've made in terms of the airlock, but I'm a no on the on the windows. Okay, I'll make that note here. Liz? Uh, yes, I vote yes. Okay, and Steve says yes as well. So the vote would be three to one, and I'll make a notation that Um, and we will, I will adjust what the permit is for, where the permit is titled to take out that restoring the six front windows. That was my misunderstanding about what was being proposed based on Sandy's and my discussion and then what was in the packet and everything else. I was like, wait, aren't we? It's We're trying to do trade off. Yeah, well, I understood what he was proposing and I didn't quite understand that Sandy wasn't supporting that, which meant it wasn't in the application. So I'll fix that and what the permit says. And all I on all I notated was a vote was three to one in favor. Start it with a notation that one committee member was not in favor of replacing the windows at the rear of the building, which had the triangular shaped glass and on the top of the upper sash. Okay. Awesome. Next item to review and approve the meeting minutes from 9-6-22. That's just you and me. So yeah. um, I read them over and they look good to me. So I say I move to have them accepted the way they are. Well, we yeah. need three people, right? Yeah. And that's, yeah. I mean, a typical is we usually wait for three people from the meeting. So we can just wait. Okay. okay. You don't have to, but that's what we Okay, we're, we're both in favor of the minutes, but if you need three, we'll wait till Ben comes back. He's okay. the only other one who was here. Yeah. Yeah. And you have your attendance. Yep. I took care of that. Anybody have anything else to add? Otherwise, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. I second it. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Martha. Eric. Steve. Liz. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.